It's a very big question, Simon. Um, I think the reality is that the lines between lifestyle trackers and, and fitness trackers has become somewhat blurred over over recent months. You know, it's a, it's a relatively new space. It's relatively immature. It's finding its feet. I guess there's there's a, there's a lack of regulation in the space. Um, and clearly there's been a disconnect between people's expectations and, uh, and the reality in terms of a lot of the risk-based trackers on the market that profess to track exercise um, as well as kind of lifestyle factors. Um, actually, when it comes to it, they're not necessarily tracking exercise very accurately. Um, our background is in the fitness industry, um, and for us it's, it's paramount importance that we provide data that people can, be, can trust. Uh, we've aligned our data with World Health Guidelines, We've, uh, it's 99.4% accurate to an ECG machine and our thing really is if, if the data isn't relevant then it's not engaging and if it's not engaging it's not motivating and won't provide long lasting sustained uh, behaviours or exercise behaviours. Um, as I say we deliver our products largely through health clubs and gyms and, and we're really passionate about ensuring that people come to a gym, they start exercising and they continue to exercise over time. And, you know, we're, we're, you know, as an organisation we're linked with UK Active which is the trade body promoting physical activity and lobbying the government in the UK and we're really passionate supporters in exposing their mission of getting more people more active more often and underpinning that is credible exercise data.